Hey everyone, we are starting chapter 6. This first section of chapter 6 is all about discrete and continuous random variables. Um, other things we'll learn about in this chapter is how to combine random variables, as well as we will learn about binomial and geometric probability distributions. After you have watched this section, you should be able to apply the concept of discrete random variables to a variety of statistical settings. You should be able to both cal calculate and interpret the mean, also call, also call expected value, of a discrete random variable. You should be able to calculate and interpret standard deviation of a discrete random variable, and then also describe continuous random variables. Now, what is a random variable? A random variable takes numerical values that describe the outcomes of some chance process. It is often labeled with a capital letter. Typically, we use an X, but you can really call it whatever you want. So, for example, on if you have a standard die, X could take the values of 1 to 6, because those are the numerical values that describe the outcome of some process, chance process of rolling a die. If the die is rolled twice and the sum is taken, X could then represent the values 2 through 12, because those are the possible sums you get when you roll two die. Now, a probability distribution shows the values that the random variable can take and how often it takes those values. So do you remember when we learned about socks? When we look at a probability distribution, uh, it can be shown both in a table as well as in a like graph form. Um, the probability distribution shows you all the possible value outcomes and then the corresponding probabilities. And then you can usually have a histogram that shows you what that distribution looks like. When we have a distribution um, in the graph form, we can always describe it, actually even without the graph, we can describe it using our socks. So we'll still talk about shape of the graph. We'll still, still talk about the center, uh, usually the mean. We'll talk about the spread, the standard deviation, and then if there are any outliers present. So here's another example of what a probability distribution could look like when you roll two die and you take the sum of those two die. So, like I said, there's two types of discrete random variable, or random variables, sorry. There's discrete and there's continuous. Discrete examples include things like dice rolls, coin flips, shoe sizes, age, uh, if you're going by the typical definition of years. Now, continuous examples are usually things that have to be measured, uh, things like foot length or height. So, just a quick little question. Which of the following is discrete? Average height of a random selected group of boys, the annual number of sweepstake winners in New York City, the number of presidential elections in the 20th century. So the only discrete ones are two and three. So your answer would be E. Hopefully you got that. So we're going to talk a lot about discrete random variables in the first part of this video and then the next part or maybe even the second video we'll talk about continuous. Now discrete random variables has a fixed set of possible values with gaps in between. Okay, so the probabilities always have to be between 0 and 1, and the sum of all the probabilities is always 1. That's nothing new. To find the probability of an event, you would add up the probabilities of the particular values that make up the event. So, for example, if you had the sum of 2 die, and you want to know what's the probability that x being the sum, what's the probability that your sum is less than 5? Well, you would add up the probability of getting a sum of 2, a sum of 3, and a sum of 4. If I want to know the probability of having a sum of at least 3, uh, you could add up all the ones above three, so three and more. Or it's a lot quicker to find the complement and just subtract that from one. Let's look at an example about baby's health at birth. Uh, first, we want to prove that this is actually a probability distribution and that it's legitimate. And then um, these values here are APGAR scores. An APGAR score is something that a baby is assigned at birth. Um, who knew they were giving out scores as soon as you were born? It has to do with, you know, how you look and how you sound and, like, how healthy you are at birth. So if APGAR scores of 7 or higher indicate a healthy baby, what's the probability that it will have at least 7? So all probabilities are between 0 and 1, and they sum to 1, so that makes it a legitimate probability distribution. To find greater than or equal to 7, we would add up 7, 8, 9, and 10. And that shows that there's about a 91% chance of randomly choosing a healthy baby. Now, if I wanted to describe a probability distribution, 
I have my graph here of the distribution. So I would go through my socks. Clearly this is um, skewed to the left, right? That's where the tail is going. But I would need to know the center and the spread, right? The mean and the standard deviation. We don't know how to do that yet. So we'll come back to this. Let's talk for a second about expected value. If you were to look at this spinner right here, that's split down the middle, half of it is zero and half of it is four. If you were to play this game 10 times, how much money would you expect to win? Well, five times you would expect to land on zero, and five times you would expect to land on four, which would give you $20. Okay. If I played this game 30 times, well, 15 times I'd probably land on zero. Again, this is probability speaking. And then 15 times I could land on four. 15 times four is, what, 60? If I played this 100 times, well, 50 times I'd land on zero, 50 times I'd land on four, 50 times four is 200. If I did this n times, well, if I look at the pattern so far, it seems I'm gonna get double, it's always two times what the value is. So when I did it 10 times, I got $20. When I did it 30 times, I got $60. 100 times, I got $200. So n times, I'll get two n dollars. Now that one wasn't too tricky because the spinner is split evenly in half. But what about this spinner? There's a quarter of the time for six, quarter of the time for two, uh, 45 out of 360, so like one eighth of the time for negative two, and then three eighths of the time for negative five. It's a little bit more complicated. So what's the formula that we're going to use? To calculate the expected value, also known as the mean of a discrete random variable, it would tell us what we would expect to happen in the long run. Now, here's something that's can be a little bit confusing. It's not very intuitive. The mean does not need to be one of the possible values of the variable. And you're not going to want to round it off to an integer value. Leave it as a decimal if it has a decimal. The calculations for it are pretty simple. You're just going to take each x value of your random variable, times it by its corresponding probability, and then you just add up all those values. Uh, when you think about typical mean, right, you, you add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. In this case, we're not dividing because it's probabilities, and when you add up all the probabilities, it adds up to one, and anything divided by one is itself. So the division part is not necessary. So let's look at that APGAR one, just so you can see how this works out. We want to find the mean of the random variable x, where x is representing the APGAR score, and interpret. This is the hard part. So we're going to be using our formula. Ex comes from expected value, and it's mu sub x, meaning it's the mean of our random variable x. And this is the formula that's all in your formula sheet. So when you're doing this, you can do it in your calculator. Um, if this were like a short answer question on an AP test or my test, uh, you do have to show at least part of the equation written out. So show that you're multiplying each x by its corresponding probability, adding them up. It's fine to do a little dot, dot, dot ellipse in the middle, and then the last one. This is going to give us 8.128. So what does this mean? The mean APGAR score of randomly selected newborn is 8.128. This is the long-term average APGAR, APGAR score brought the P, of many, many randomly chosen babies. And like I said before, it doesn't need to po be a possible value of x, and it doesn't need to be an integer, because it's a long-term average over many repetitions. Please remember that part. All right, I want you to try this one. We're talking about on an American roulette wheel, there are 38 slots numbered 1 through 36, plus a 0 and a double 0. One wager player can make, players can make is called a corner bet. So in this case, you put your chips on the intersection of four numbered squares. If one of those comes up and the player bet a dollar, they get his dollar back plus another eight. Otherwise, the casino keeps the original one dollar bet. If X is going to be the net gain from a single one corner bet, what the possible outcomes are either negative one or eight. And then the probability distribution is shown. What is the mean of X? So what you would do is you would multiply each value x by its probability, and then you would add those products together. 
you would end up getting negative 0.0526-ish, uh, which is the same as negative 119. So if you were to play this game many, many, many times, you would expect on average to lose about five cents for every bet. Okay, now variance and standard deviation. Let's review. Variance is the average square distance from the mean, where standard deviation is the average distance from your mean, right? Uh, our symbols, we've got the sigma squared for variance and then just sigma for standard deviation. Now to find the variance and standard deviation in your calculator, uh, you would put your x values in the list one, your probabilities in list two. To find both the mean and the standard deviation, you would just go to one of our stats like normal. There's something different here though. You put your list one is your values. You would need to say frequency list for probabilities in list two. This is because not every x value has an equal likely chance of happening, right? They have different probabilities. Now it's going to give you a slightly different value for the standard deviation, um, but it's going to be close enough, okay? Now if this were an AP test, test or my test, you can't just write you did one variable statistics, right? You have to say the beginning steps of the hand calculation and then you can say the answer, okay? So you have to show at least the beginnings of the work. So looking at our APGAR score again, if we want to compute the standard deviation of the random variable x and interpret, remember x represents the APGAR score. So here's the formula. Again, this formula is on your formula sheet. It looks complicated, but it's really just if you follow PEMDAS, right? So first thing you do, you would subtract because that's in parentheses. You take each x minus the mean, the expected value, which you already calculated. So you have to have the mean before you do this. Then you would square each of those differences, times them by their corresponding probability, and then you add up all those values. So how it starts, each x minus 8.128, remember that was the expected value or the mean that we calculated earlier. We would square it and then times it by its corresponding probability. We end up getting a value of 2.066. That's your variance, right? So what you then need to do is you need to square root it to get the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of x is 1.437. So how do we interpret this? On average, a randomly selected baby's APGAR score will differ from the mean 8.128 by about 1.4 units. Okay, let's try one on your own. So press pause, read this over, and try it, and then I'll show you the answers. Here are our answers. The mean was 2.851, and the standard deviation was 1.632. Make sure you show the beginning steps of the calculations by hand before just writing an answer, and then giving a proper interpretation. Okay. Uh, the next video is going to talk about continuous random variables, so stay tuned for that.